So rather than talk about animation today, I wanted to go through a few design decisions I make when creating an illustration. Here's the final piece, but let's go back in time to see how it was created. Wow. The text I was given for the illustration is Mac is back. And I knew that was the most important part, so that's where I started. So I came up with a few basic ideas. So when I'm working, I usually rough things out in a blue line, and that's kind of a throwback to animation where the blue line is, is a rough line that's separate from your final line. And that's just an indication to me and hopefully to the client that things are still rough at this stage. So my first idea was fists going through a brick wall, a basic over-the-top superhero idea. My next idea, I wanted to give it a sort of retro feel, so I included a record player and a lounge cat. Then there was the fist in the air, which I didn't really care for. And this one is not a scope, but it's just a way I was figuring out how to divide up the letters since they're so symmetrical. So in this version, I'm taking some of those previous elements and putting them on a canvas where it's divided into squares. And I'm just adding the positive and negative parts of the design. And I've also added this superhero element. And the superhero is intentionally headless because I didn't want it to turn into a caricature or have the head steal the focus. And I liked how the elbow of the superhero kind of jutted out from the canvas. Um, and I also really liked how the cat tail sort of broke up the blockiness of the design. And continuing with this idea, I started pulling out the circles. There's one around the is, there's one around the M, and then it turned into the speaker cone. And I like how the cape of the superhero created this sort of undulating shape, which again broke up the design a little bit. And the pattern of the wood grain around the speaker, and how in this version the cat is sort of framed by the sea. So I was liking the cat and decided to add another one. And so I took all the elements that I liked and tried turning that into a circular design. And I liked how the, with the circle design you could get a little bit of the superhero's chin, but still have him be faceless. And riffing off the, the wave of the cape, I continued adding more of those undulating shapes throughout the design. It softens the design a little bit. It, it contrasts a lot with those geometric shapes and it also adds a little bit of rhythm, kind of suggests music or wind or hints of spring air or long walks in the woods. At this point I sent the design to the client to see what they thought and they chose number three which is where the design seemed to be headed. I've got a basic composition here um, now I start working on the line work. And here I really have to resist getting too detailed. I, I could have gone really nuts exploring all the muscles and geometry of the superhero. I do a little bit of that, but I'm trying to keep this more minimal. So from here I start filling in the areas that I think are going to be the darkest. And I went and redesigned the record player to be a little more cubist. And that's the thing I don't think people realize about abstract art, is the artist almost always knows how it's supposed to look in reality. We all know the laws of perspective and that's, it's just been ingrained in us. In the beginning as young artists we want to make things as realistic as possible, at least I did. And after doing that over and over and over again, there's the desire to start breaking those rules. And maybe it's out of boredom of following the rules so many times that gives us that desire, that inspiration to start doing things more abstractly. Anyway, that's all just to say that it goes against everything I've learned to make that record player tilt the wrong way. And I have to force myself to do it, so it's a very conscious decision. Okay, so back to the record player. I, I like that oval element, and I started sticking that around different parts of the design. And I like those shapes in there because it's sort of unclear what they are. Is that a washing machine behind him? Is that another speaker cone? Is, is that a hole in the floor? Is that part of the rug design? We're not sure. So the idea of taking a shape and sticking around different parts of the design is cool, but it doesn't always work. I tried doing the same thing with these two buttons on the record player and stuck them around different parts of the design and it looks like it, the design just got shot with BBs at the state fair. So get rid of those. Okay, so from here I start testing everything out in grayscale, just black, white, and a few different grays. And at this point I'm still not sure whether the lines should break up the text like they do. I'm on the fence about it. So I leave that for now and I started playing with adding details and patterns. You've got some, some little details of a shag carpet or astroturf. Um, the wood grain of the speaker comes back. And I started playing with sticking that wood grain in a few different areas. 
So at this point, it's a good idea to take a break because for me, my eyes have been looking at this for way too long. Coming back with fresh eyes, I, I noticed that the record player needs a little help. Wanted to keep it a little more minimalist. And now it's time to work out the color palette. And one of the biggest influences for me, especially in color, was Jack Levine. And the way his paintings have these splotches of color that are spread around the canvas and kind of lead your eye all over the canvas in, in such a beautiful way. And even though this is a very different image, I try to do the same thing where I have the colors spaced out. And it's at this point that it becomes a little overwhelming with all the possibilities of color. And these are just a few different versions of the color ideas I went through. I even tried removing the line work altogether just to see how that looked, but I decided it was important to keep it in. So instead I tried softening some of the lines, lightening them to see if the color separation was enough on its own. And then I started playing with what lines I could remove altogether just to force myself to be a little minimalist. I outlined the M in white to make it pop a little more. And I started defining some of the shapes like the hero's legs and torso with tone instead of just black line. In this version, I tried removing the black outline of the text. I decided I liked the way the black outline made the text pop, but I needed to come back and fix what was bothering me about it. So I separate the wood grain into a light and a dark. My son Colin had a problem with the cat only having one ear, so I put in a second ear just for his sake. I removed the outline around is. And this part of the process is all about looking at the design and seeing what bothers you about it, what things you need to fix and refine. Is there something that's catching your eye that's bugging you? like the, the music notes are sloppy, fix those. The wood grain needed cleaning up. I tried adding some blue wood grain around the A and I had to go back and hand draw around the letters because the way it was in the font was really bugging me. I brought back in the dark line around the cape. I got rid of the gray that's inside the triangle of the A. And at some point, I called it finished. So even a design as simple as this involves hundreds of decisions. So simple isn't always easy, but it just comes down to finding things you like, enhancing those, getting rid of what you don't like, or changing those. And I think just having the freedom and the flow to be able to play, to be able to play with putting patterns on things or trying something different and having fun. So hopefully this helps. Let me know if it does or any ideas you have. Thanks.